I think I pulled a muscle around my neck. Doesn't really feel that good, but uh, I gotta make this video. Hey guys, Ibra here with Hardware Connects, and this is the MSI PS63 Modern Notebook. I can't call it a gaming laptop, although I don't know if I could call it a gaming laptop or a content creator friendly laptop, but we'll, we'll, we'll finalize on that in the conclusion. So this is an interesting notebook because MSI partnered up with the Discovery Channel uh, to come up with this guy and as you can see by the design it, uh, it it looks definitely a lot sleeker certainly looks not msi whatsoever because if you if you think about msi uh, you think gamery aggressive designs but this is totally uh, a complete refresh and i really like the way how it looks so just to quickly go over the specs it has a whiskey lake core i7 processor uh, 16 gigabytes of ram a 512 gigabyte ssd nvme ssd but oddly enough my unit was partitioned which was really weird and then it also has a GTX 1050 Max-Q GPU. And that is an interesting combination because typically you would pair or you'd find gaming laptops uh, with primarily mainstream Intel CPUs and a discrete NVIDIA GPU. But in this case, it's different. MSI decided to go with a slightly underpowered U-series processor and pair it up with a 1050 Max-Q GPU. Uh, and so I just really wanted to test out the performance and what you can get uh, with something like this particularly interested about the battery life as well. And there are a lot of surprises and of course, a few disappointments as well. So uh, let's get into it. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Damn, what type of ITX system you run? This is an ATX machine. You mean micro ATX? No, no, full size ATX components is just a small package. It can still satisfy. The Q500L by Cooler Master, an affordable and a pretty compact enclosure for all your regular hardware with perforated exterior, a PSU bracket that shifts up and down, flexible side I.O., and awesome cable management. The Q500L, a compact frame with full ATX satisfaction. Check it out below. All right, so before we get into the aesthetics of this notebook, I do want to quickly discuss pricing. So you can pick it up for around $1,300 to $1,600, depending on, again, um, depending on retailers, again, they have a lot of these notebooks on sale. So uh, that's kind of the price range that you're looking at for the specs that I just mentioned a minute ago. With that out of the way, let's talk about the design. And I really love what MSI has done here. The partnership with the Discovery Channel really shows uh, when you take a closer look at the notebook. So the front panel feels like it's made out of polycarbon materials that sandblasted in this galaxy blue trim. By the way, this is an MSI term. The interior is full on aluminum and it comes in this nice carbon gray finish uh, with a bit of blue accents around the trackpad. And I think that's a nice touch. The keyboard layout is pretty compact. The key sizes are slightly bigger than usual. And I like that because I got used to it really fast. Uh, they do have a shorter amount of travel distance. And I wanna say that they're slightly better than my daily driver, the Razer Blade 15. So that's nice. Uh, there is good feedback. The arrow keys are positioned appropriately, nothing to complain here. It's also backlit, but it does not feature RGB lighting, which I think is great because it wouldn't have fit uh, the design aesthetics of this notebook in the first place. Uh, however, I do wish the brightness levels were a little bit you know, higher or brighter because they don't get as bright uh, in darker conditions. Moving on to the trackpad, uh, MSI went with a slightly different approach this time, so they made it wider to accommodate uh, your fingers comfortably, and I really enjoyed my time using it. It features Windows position drivers, so uh, it takes advantage of all the gesture controls baked into Windows 10. And it also has a built-in fingerprint reader, which is a nice touch. Taking a look at the IO on the left side, you have your power in HDMI that can only output 4K at 30 Hertz, a USB 3.1 Gen 1 type C port that also acts as a display port, another USB 3.1 Gen 1 type A, uh, that supports Quick Charge 3.0. That's actually a really cool feature because not a lot of laptops support that. And the fact that you can simply plug in your included USB cable to plug in your smartphone, provided that it supports Quick Charge is great. And I think this would come in super handy for people who travel a lot. And of course you do get a headphone slash mic jack. Switching over to the right, you get two more USB 3.1 ports, one of them being Gen 1 and the other one being Gen 2. And a micro SD card slot. Now, a lot of gamers won't care about this, but for content creators, it's a huge deal because this notebook is geared for that. And the fact that, you know, they're targeting this for people who travel as well, who create content, doesn't make any sense because, you know, most people use cameras with full-size SD cards and I would have preferred to have that on a notebook that's geared for content creation. It just something's missing there. On the positive side, the display is really nice to work with. It's a 15.6 inch 1080p IPS screen that exhibits great colors 
with good contrast ratio. It's also a matte display and the webcam is placed at the right location. And I thoroughly enjoyed my time gaming on this laptop as well because the display is just really good. However, I did wish if the screen got a little bit more brighter because viewing content was a bit challenging outdoors. And this is something that I uh, have encountered among other gaming laptops in the past. Brands just tend to pack in good displays that are great in colors, but just not bright enough, especially if you compare to what Apple offers with their MacBook Pros, those screens get super bright. Uh, but again, like I said, if you're thinking about picking this up and if you're traveling a lot, uh, you may find the brightness output on this uh, a little bit uh, you know, disappointing. Now, in terms of upgrades, when you crack open this notebook, the first red flag that I caught was that the memory is running in single channel mode. And so I was certainly expecting that to affect performance, which we'll definitely take a look at later on. You can upgrade the memory up to 32 gigabytes, switching over to the storage configuration. The main drive is sitting on a PCI Gen 3 slot, whereas the other one only supports SATA based drives. So keep that in mind. As for battery, the PS63 rocks an 82 watt hour unit. And I'm just going to say this in one word. It is just amazing. I mean, I was easily able to get over 11 hours of usage on my light load test, refreshing a Chrome web page, and under heavy load, it is again very respectable. Uh, and it almost makes sense because when you have, you know, a pretty efficient processor like the Whiskey Lake CPU, and when you pair that up with a fairly respectable graphics card like the GTX 1050, uh, I think you've got a really solid middle ground in terms of power efficiency and performance. And guys, I also want to mention that I haven't tested other 15 inch notebooks with uh, lower voltage processors and lower end discrete graphics cards. So the four core eight threaded CPU is a decent performer. Obviously keep your expectations lower since it doesn't get anywhere closer to the six core 8750H processor, but you can still get a lot of work done. And I was really surprised uh, with the video editing experience as well. Now, typically on any notebook reviews, I would take our standard 13 minute 4k project and I would render that on the machine to see how fast it renders. But weirdly enough, uh, this notebook had some issues with Adobe Premiere and that project, which was so odd. Obviously, Premiere is broken. I mean, I'm having issues with my desktop PC, so uh, I tried rendering another project, uh, which is a 10 minute 4K clip, and you know it completed that render in just a bit over 14 minutes, which is really respectable because you've got CUDA acceleration paired with Intel QuickSync. So like I said, you can get away with video editing on this thing. I wouldn't push it to the extreme, Ends, but uh, I'm actually really surprised uh, by the playback performance on this guy. Gaming on the other hand, well, let's just say the 1050 Max Q pushed out respectable frame rates paired with a Whiskey Lake processor. I mean, the fact that the memory is running in single channel mode certainly bottlenecked the performance. And this is the PS63's biggest disappointment because I actually made a separate video comparing dual channel versus single channel on notebooks and uh, the results were substantial. I mean, if you're interested, you can actually check that video right over here. But, you know, if MSI preloaded this with a dual channel configuration, uh, it just m would have made this notebook a lot more responsive and the frame rates would have obviously topped the charts, especially at 1080p at medium to low settings. Taking a look at temperatures, things are not looking that great. On a full synthetic load using Ida64, the CPU did get toasty at 95C and it did throttle. However, do keep in mind that it's a full synthetic load and not a real world use case scenario, especially for content creators. So I did monitor clock speeds when rendering uh, the Premiere project and the CPU got around four gigahertz, which is again, well respectable and the temperatures are also well under control. Uh, unless if you decide to fully push the processor to its absolute limits, you shouldn't have a problem. The GTX 1050 Max-Q did peak at 84C, which is uh, to be expected considering uh, the form factor of this notebook. And the clock speeds were shifting back and forth between 1200 and 1683 megahertz. Fan noise is tolerable. I mean, the good thing is that it doesn't sound like a jet fan when gaming or doing anything productive. Under idle scenarios, it's also really quiet, which fits the notebook's character. Now, MSI has pre-installed control center that lets the user switch between different performance modes and of course adjust fan speeds as well. Uh, and you can also set, uh, you know, CPU and GPU preferences for certain applications, which is pretty nice. And the one thing that I'm really surprised is the lack of a crazy amount of bloatware on this notebook, considering that it is an MSI laptop. Because, you know, the last MSI notebook that I reviewed was, again, this was a while back. It was a huge, thick beast, gaming beast from MSI. And that thing was just loaded with bloatware apps. But I'm really surprised by the cut down of that on this notebook. I'm, I'm hoping it's the same case with their gaming lineup, but uh, yeah, on this guy, 
very minimal. So I guess it's time to conclude my thoughts on the PS63 Modern from MSI. You see, the biggest strength of this notebook is the battery life. The fact that I was able to get over 11 hours of use in my use case scenario is just fascinating. I mean, when you look at the hardware configuration, this thing you know, has a U-series rescaling processor. And when you pair that up with a respectable, again, GTX 1050 Max Q GPU, uh, it's, the combination is just very unique. And I think it establishes a solid middle ground, especially for people who don't want to spend too much on a super fast gaming laptop, but also don't want to compromise on just an Ultrabook featuring uh, integrated UHD graphics. That GTX 1050, guys, it really does elevate uh, the content creating experience. That being said, there are some things that I'm not a fan of, especially on this notebook. So first and foremost, the speakers, uh, they're not that great. They're downwards firing and they completely just block because, I don't know, it's just a weird implementation. Uh, I would have preferred front facing speakers for better projection. Uh, also, the single channel memory mode is just a big red flag in my books because it affects gaming performance. Now, you can upgrade it on your own to a dual channel config, but that's an investment on your end, so keep that in mind. Uh, and the micro SD card reader is an ironic implementation, especially since MSI is gearing this for content creators who travel a lot. Lastly, there's the cost. So as I mentioned earlier, you can pick up this notebook for anywhere between $1,300 and $1,600. And that puts it at a very interesting spot, especially in the competition, because you can pick up a faster gaming laptop with a GTX 1060 and a faster six core processor for around the same price. So I guess it ultimately depends on what you really need. I mean, are you someone who's looking for exceptional battery life in a notebook that has, you know, decent performance that can comfortably push games at 1080p over 60 frames per second? Uh, and that's the question that has to be answered, especially by the user. Uh, and I think the PS63 establishes a really good middle ground uh, between, you know, a super fast high performance gaming system and an ultrabook. And I think if you're willing to you know, do the memory upgrades on your own, and if you're willing to go past the speakers and the micro SD card implementation, I don't think you can go wrong with a notebook like this. But I wanna know your thoughts about the PS63 Modern from MSI. What do you guys think about it? First and foremost, do you like the design? Also, are you comfortable with the combination of a GTX 1050 Max-Q and uh, a Whiskey Lake processor? I do wanna quickly point out that I did notice a listing on MSI's website where they're offering this notebook with a 1650 Max-Q GPU, although it is not available to buy right now, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. But let me know what you guys think about this notebook in the comments down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out some relevant content over here. Subscribe to our new channel here, and we'll see you in the next one.